Welcome back to the Cricket Today podcast on Friday, January 12th. Excited for a huge weekend of cricket ahead. I'm your host, Liam McCallion, also known as the Stats Guy. I'm here with TikTok famous, Barbara's Arms, the number one fan, the Virat Kohli <laughs> hater, whatever you want to call him, Marcus Barzana. How you going, Marcus? Oh, I'm doing absolutely fantastic. I've been told I love you uh, <laughs> on the comment section more times than I have by my family in my entire <laughs> life. It's, it's great. It's great. I love it. You might have to head over to Pakistan. I think they'll they love you over there. Uh, we've also got Liam Malali, big Heat fan now. Uh, he's he's changed to the, to the dark side. How are you going, Liam? Good, thanks. That's guy. And uh, yeah, Marcus, if you haven't received that much love, it you might you might need to attend some uh, counselling that you've been mentioning. He already oh, does. I already like, do. That's all right, mate. <laughs> he already does for our Chelsea uh, games in the in the English Premier League, as I do as well. We got told to after we were talking about uh, them on the Football Today podcast. Too much, too much Chelsea hate. Uh, today, best time of year, obviously the BBL is heating up, really, really close to finals now. So, so much is going on. We're going to cover all things that happen overnight in the BBL between the Hurricanes and Scorchers before we are including that really fun wrap up. We're going to do a bit of an interesting one, a Melbourne Derby best moments. Uh, so between the Stars and the uh, Renegades, which is this weekend, it doesn't mean as much this game. Actually, no, it means much a lot for the Stars to make finals, so that'll be interesting. And some Supercoach BBL and BBL predictions with the four games over the weekend. So let's get right into it, lads. Hurricanes versus Strikers last night. Strikers charging towards the final spot. Hurricanes really needed to win. What were the scores uh, in this one, please, Leo? So, yeah, the Hurricanes came out 6 for 167 off 20 overs. Sort of set the platform early. Uh, Mac Wright with 37 off 27. Caleb Jewell, 32 off 30. And then some late order hitting. Tim David, 22 off 10. Good to see him uh, finally rock up for this tournament. I know. <laughs> uh, then Adelaide just came out of nowhere really again. Well, not really out of nowhere. They did it a couple nights ago to the Hurricanes, but... Just explosive at the top. I think we'll touch on Weatherall in a second. But where the hell did that come from? That was insane. That was just the amazing innings. That was unbelievable. We got the uh, slog of the night there, Marcus. Are you going to cover that one today? Oh yeah, it just has to be Jake Weatherall, doesn't it? Um, out of out of nowhere, he, it was he played three three matches and made eleven runs. He couldn't even beat. Leo's high score so far this season. Oh, yeah, yeah. 11, wasn't it? That was unnecessary, <laughs> Marcus, unnecessary. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was only his fourth time batting this season and he, he completely smashed it. He's making the most of his opportunity, isn't he, with Chris Lynn um, out with a hamstring. Um, he's definitely putting his, his, his place up and it'll be hard to take him out of the side if Chris Lynn comes back, uh, to be completely honest. But, geez, he literally made Paddy Dooley his, his toy, didn't he? Yeah. Like, he... <laughs> I don't know why Paddy Dooley just bowled horrendous, didn't he? What, what were the figures in the end? He ended up getting hit for about 40 off. I'll have a quick look. Two point something overs, I reckon. Um, um, he's been really off. I talked him up at the start of the season because he had, what did he have, 20 wickets, I think, or close to 20 wickets last season. There's obviously more matches, but he's been really off this year. It's been a very, none for 53. He's had a, off 2.5 overs. There you go. How, how bad was that? You got, that could be up there hit, with the worst. Ever. He got hit for a six and then he bowled the ball, the, the same ball. Two balls in a row and gets hit for three sixes. Oh, what are you thinking? <laughs> what is he doing? Jake Weatherall has been smacking you around like a disobedient <laughs> stepfather, and he's been absolutely <laughs> killing it. And you oh, bowl in God. the same spot. I don't know what you're thinking, but oh, that is very. Jeez, wow, oh, Jake not- Weatherall. What a legend. Yeah, 80 off 32 he ended up with. I don't know if he ended up yeah, saying he scored. 80 off 32, out of nowhere. A bit of an RKO out of nowhere. A bit of a reference for Alex on Football Today. He'll like a bit of a referee, uh, wrestling reference there. i got no idea what that means, but I've heard of it before. Uh, yeah, 80 off 32. Yeah, really surprised. That was really out of nowhere, wasn't it? Uh, I'm going to go Jaffer of the day, lads. That's my one for today. Bit of slim pickings with the bowlers, as we discussed before today's show. Cam Boyce was two for 17 off his four. just want to talk about, uh, I think the commentators were talking about it as well. He's one of the only bowlers in the comp now that's sort of one of those slow spinners that sort of gets the drift. The other guys are all like, I don't hate bowls like that, just darted in, hardly spin it. Like Ashton Agar, even though the last couple of games he's been really good. Uh, but he's just a traditional spinner, gets the drift. As he got that drift for that uh, stumping wide, the uh, iconic stumping wide uh, that from the other night, he just gets that drift. And I really like love watching him bowl. So the Jaffa of the day is just that drift he gets, two for 17, not... The best figures going around, but the best of the night. And he's been really good. A real resurgence of his career when he had to take some time off for a few different reasons over the last few. Uh, honestly, yeah. honestly, just quickly on that, I think he's been one of the most underrated players so far yeah. in, this, in this big best season. He's Absolutely. been coming in to fill in the job for Rashid Khan. I think he's done an excellent, excellent job. Like you see like two for 17 or four, they're, they're great figures for the short format, but he's been, he's been getting that almost every game. Mm. 
Um, no. So he's definitely been, yeah, one of my picks for the bowlers of the season. Yeah, I want to have a look at his overall BBL stats if this loads up. So he's got eight wickets in eight matches. That's solid. That's all you need from a sort of spinner. And he's uh, 54 dot balls for the team, which is right up there. So he's going really well. A couple of twofers, average of 25. So yeah, you're right. He's, he's not up there in terms of uh, Rashid Khan, but he's definitely going really well. All right, Leo, your favorite part of the day. You want to take a take a slash at someone? <laughs> what do you got here? Well, just on Cam Boyce, he just reminds me of that sort of old clubman that just yeah. bowls slow, just <laughs> outside off. You can't hit him. You, you lose your patience and then you just hold out to someone in the deep. Sure. But he has been uh, a bit underrated this season, but also bowling 70-kilometer leg spin. Let's hope uh, someone else can take over the Jeff of the day title because he's had two now in three days. So... Let's, oh, hope, yeah. let's hope someone else can uh, can uh, compete with him in that in that regard. Um, but just on moral victory of the night, so I don't know if this is accurate, uh, but I've read it somewhere, and it also was said mid game last night. So these numbers aren't exactly accurate. I'll check, I'll check for you right now the actual stats, but you can go through it. So David Payne, he has conceded two hundred and fifty four runs. From 24.4 overs this big bash season. That's an economy of 10.4. None for 32 off three overs last night. I think Marcus mentioned before the show that he's been hit for the most boundaries this BBL season. That's very, very poor from an overseas player. Has not found his rhythm at all. I'll give it a moral victory though because even though he sucks, his team (laughs) won last night. So good on him. Uh, They're sitting in fifth or fourth. Should make finals with the team they have, um, but he is a liability. So he gets moral victory for being right place at the right time. Oh, yeah, oh, that's, a, that's a very fun moral victory right there. I think a lot of international players get away with being crap where they're like, oh, crap, we're, we're paying him a lot of money. We better give, we better give Payne his four overs or his three overs every game, and he's getting absolutely smashed. So I think he needs to improve. I actually don't mind him. I think he was he at the Scorchers we were talking about the other day. He was really solid at the Scorchers, and now he's come over to the Strikers and – yeah, lost, lost the plot a little bit. But as an overseas player, he's probably going to get every single game still. So we'll see how he goes. Hopefully, if, if the if the strikers don't make the finals, it is all on David Payne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm putting it on him now because oh, they, they've lost a lot of games where they've made... I think the batting has done their job, but they lost some games where they've made 200 plus. Uh, like especially where they wouldn't last season, like at the home at home versus the Stars on New Year's Eve. True. It's just one of those games. And... Um, yeah, because the other boys are doing their job, and I think even Cameron Boyce, we touched on him before. He was, well, he was even great in that New Year's Eve game, keeping the economy down. And obviously, David Payne is just getting smacked around a little bit. Mm. Yeah, he, he's been shocking, and that, I'm glad we brought that up. That's that's a good laugh. Uh, so I usually say, my, but that Supercoach is my favourite part of the show. But this is absolutely awesome. Being from Melbourne, we love the Melbourne derby between the Stars and Renegades. There's been some absolutely awesome moments, some controversial ones, some big scores, some collapses, some everything that's happened in these Melbourne derbies. Uh, so let's start off with Leo. What is your favourite Melbourne derby moment? Uh, I'm sure you have a few big Renegades, man. What are you, you going to go with here? I'm going to go all the way back to BBL 4, I believe it was, in 2015. So for those who don't remember, this was the sort of, I guess, famous Nathan Rivington last over. Renegades batted first, made about 150-odd. Stars were cruising um, in typical Stars fashion, and then they made it really hard for themselves. They needed one of three. I think Alex Keith would have been at the wicket. Um, So Bulldogs, man, for those who follow the NFL. Uh, I think Tom Triffitt, who the hell is that guy? Don't know. Uh, he was at the wicket as well, but they got two run outs to bring it down to one off one. And then the third ball or the last ball of the over, fantastic Yorker from Remington, straight to Ferguson, sort of the backhand flick. Everyone thought it was out, but turned out Remington had hit his own stumps with his shoulder, I think. So it was a bit of a bit of carnage at the MCG. I remember thinking, oh, that's out. My, I think I was about 14 at the time. I would, I, I said to my dad, that's out, that's out, that's out. And then the more I played it, the more I'm like heartbroken. So yeah. I think that's that's the day I stopped being a Renegades fan, actually. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were a Renegades number one fan. That was when you- and I, I think Stats Guy is about to go back to the to the day when you became a Renegades yeah, fan yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, between 2015 and 2019, Leo forgot what the Renegades were. And then we got to the uh, grand final in 2019. That's my favorite moment of all time. BBL 08. Uh, so that, sorry, BBL 8. 
that was absolutely unbelievable. The Melbourne Derby grand final that they BBI was losing their mind that both the Melbourne teams made the grand final. Uh, so the stars, they were, absolutely cruising they were one for 93 had to make not massive of a score i've just forgotten what the actual score they had to make was but it was about one no 145 they had to make uh they were cruising one for 93 stoyness was really good in that match opening then they absolutely crumble seven for 19 they lost in the middle uh boise actually that day was really good he i think ended up with player of the match uh they were absolutely cruising the stars and just another uh stars final that they've uh absolutely crumbled in which i think is hilarious they've always had these big names and big stars come over uh and they're one of only two teams not to win a bbl uh title which is the hurricanes and the stars so seven for 19 they lost which is the biggest collapse in uh big bash history and they had to do it in a grand final in 2019 which was absolutely hilarious so that's my Favorite one. I, I wasn't there. I wish I was at that game. I was watching on TV and it was absolutely awesome. Big boy. Boise's getting a lot of mentions in this. Uh, <laughs> he might be our uh, favorite player. <laughs> we'll have to keep tracking him if they make the finals and I have to get him on. Uh, all right, Marcus, I think you've got everyone's favorite uh, derby moment of all time. What, what have you got there? Yeah, if this, if this isn't on your list, I don't know what's going on. And I can sum it up in three words. Yep. F*** you, Marlon. <laughs> Oh no, he's got magic. Yeah. <laughs> Go grab some people. Go grab some more people. Um, you know, it just has to be Warney versus Samuels, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> that that was one of the best moments. I remember I was at that game. I, I was I was obviously younger, um, but I just remember Marlon Samuels when he when he came off the pitch. He, he had blood uh, like uh, on his all over his shirt, and yeah. um, geez, lucky he was wearing red that day because because it, it blended in a bit like. It, Bit of dead Deadpool vibes about it, but um, no, that, that was great, wasn't it? And uh, obviously, Marlon uh, stopped stars running a running a two um, in the first inning. So yep. Shane Warne thought he'd have his revenge, and he also chucked the ball straight at him when he was feeling in close. And Marlon Samuels chucked his bat halfway down the pitch, and geez, it, it, they they were saying, "Run him out, run him out." It was oh, that has to be one of the most entertaining moments in cricket history, let it alone is, Big yeah. Bash at Melbourne Derby history. Oh, I think everyone, I remember that day so clearly. I remember watching it on TV because uh, Warney had a mic on. You got Marlon Samuels down the other end with the stump mics and they were right next to the mics. This is all happening. <laughs> like you could just hear the swearing, hear that Marlon Samuels throws his bat. Warney, I think he was getting to, obviously towards the end of his career. So he was being a bit of a grump. He was not happy. There's the great photo, which we might have to chuck up on the socials of Warney just pointing straight at Marlon Samuels. They're probably like a couple of centimeters away. Thought they were going to punch on in the middle of the G. That would have, that would have been absolutely awesome. I, I think I'd back Warney. He's just, he got it. Gets a bit angry. I, <laughs> well, I think there's a lot of Australian bias in that because if they got in a scrap, Marlon Samuels is all over him. Yeah, to be fair, Marlon Samuels was about ten years younger, from, or more, fifteen maybe, and uh, he's got a bit of size. Doesn't he, Marlon Samuels? Who would you back in that fight, uh, Leo? <laughs> I think Marlon will win. I think Warney will probably, yeah, just a bit older. Just a bit, yeah, fair, yeah. fair. That has got to be the best moment. Yeah, we'll have to chuck something up for that because that, oh, that is hilarious. I remember I, I, that went everywhere. That went all over the world for like a month, I reckon, of just people going, did that really just happen? <laughs> it was like a movie. Oh, uh, that was absolutely nuts. And I'm so glad we got to cover, yeah, some Melbourne Derby moments, lots of renegades, uh, uh, things happening there, and, yeah, and stars, which was really cool. Uh, let's get into some Super Coach guys. Super Coach segment. We've got four games uh, we're going to cover in our predictions later. So we've got lots of Super Coach players to pick from even though we've only covered a couple of teams there, but that's all right. So let's go with uh, Leo first. What's your super coach pick for this weekend? I'm picking Max here this weekend. Expensive, 261000 but finals are still on the line for the Stars. They need a win against the Gades. Yep. So I'm expecting Maxi to step up like he did in the World Cup for the Aussies. He's averaged 87 this season. Uh, and against this Gades bowling lineup, like they – they haven't been great all year, the, no. all season, the Gades, they're bowling. And it's at the point now where they can't make finals. So they might try a few different things. Some younger players. We saw uh, Calipotha and Fergo Neal play last game. And although yeah. they, bowled, they bowled really well, to be fair to them, probably should have been playing earlier. Yeah. You know, I think Maxi's going to see that and be like, you know, I've hit harder bo- bowlers for six and dominated harder bowling attacks. So I'm all over Maxi. Who are you yeah. leaning towards, Stats Guy? A uh, bit of one one guy we haven't really talked about. Not having the best season in his normal stats, but in super coach has been really good. Jack Edwards, uh, one hundred seventy eight thousand six hundred. I think that's a bit of a steal. Bit underrated in super coach, I'd say, with a five round average of fifty eight, which is really solid, and averages sixty nine this season at the SCG. Uh, over one wicket a game. He's having just over one wicket a game and twenty runs. Just a really handy all rounder. That's uh, last season. I think he only bowled one or two overs, but he's bowling most games for the uh, Sydney Sixers now, and he's been their main all rounder. That sort of that Cam Green type player 
that uh, people are talking him up. Obviously not to the level of Cam Green just yet, but he's sort of on the rise as that next Aussie all-rounder. We've got a lot of really good all-rounders, which is awesome to have for uh, especially white ball cricket for Australia. I think Jack Edwards is slowly coming up to that next really good all-rounder. So he's got a really good, yeah, really good average this season. Really cheap, so he's under that two hundred thousand compared to a lot of the players now. So don't mind that, and I think he can have a big match against the Sydney Thunder, especially over this weekend in that uh, Sydney Smash, because the Sydney Thunder absolutely stinks. So get a lot of uh, Sydney Sixers players into your side. Uh, all right, Marcus, we're going we're going back to the well here a bit. <laughs> yeah, we're going, we're going we're going back to the to the Melbourne Derby in this one. Um, and I'm looking at Marcus Stoinis and my namesake. Uh, I just think he's one hundred and five thousand seven hundred. Uh, he found form a little bit with the bat. Um, recently, he's got an average of 84.8 from nine games against the Renegades with, with a high wow. score of 199, which is which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, so I just think the Stars have more match winners in their team. They need a win. Stoinis is going to have to deliver. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'd actually be interested to see yeah, Maxine Stoinis going off, but I, I just got a feeling, as I'll get into my prediction later, that the Stars might crumble again, as they like to do towards the end of the season. Uh, all right, talking about that, we've got, we got through some super coach. Let's get into some predictions. We've got four matches. So we've got the Sydney Smash tonight, two matches tomorrow, and then a one on Sunday. So we'll cover all them uh, so that we can roll into our Monday show with all these predictions. So let's start with uh, Sixers versus Thunder, the Sydney Smashes. Sydney smash, which is tonight. Uh, yeah, Thunder have been really bad. So I'm just going to start off and say, I've got to tip the Sixers. Sixers, I think, are a much better side. They've won the last four Sydney derbies. Uh, and I think this is one of the easiest picks of the weekend. Who are you going, Leo? Yeah, Sixers, uh, I agree. Easy pick of the weekend. Thunder have not impressed at all, have they? Sixers have a lot more depth. So I think this will be an easy win. Yep, Marcus. Yeah, oh yeah, Sixers. It would just be good to see some some test stars back on, back out on the pitch as well, just in time for the Sydney smash. Yeah, actually, I forgot about that. You got yeah, David Warner, uh, Steve Smith. I wouldn't be surprised if Steve Smith just slaps another hundred every time he last last season he came back into the big match, slapped a hundred. Uh, so and he has actually talking about derby moments. He did slap a hundred and twenty five in the in the Sydney Smash last year. So hopefully he can do something like that again. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, Scorchers versus Heat. This is definitely the game of the weekend. It doesn't mean as much because the Heat can't move off the top of the table, but they'll want to take some momentum and confidence heading into the finals. Uh, I'm going to go the Heat. I've kept the Heat I think almost every game uh, this season. I'm on the bandwagon. I can see that a few other guys uh, on this podcast might be turning that around as well. Yeah, the Heat, they bowled uh, so well. Got nine wickets against the Scorchers. Leo mentioned on the podcast, I think yesterday, that he's never seen the uh, Scorchers bowlers get hit for so much as well. Like the likes of Richardson and Beridoff getting hit out of the park is so rare i think they're just an all-around great team the heat so i'm gonna i gotta back them i think they're gonna stay undefeated the whole way through now uh and leo who are you going yeah like you stats guy i've been tipping the heat all year so i'm gonna oh, keep going, wow. keep going yeah. with the heat uh now nah, look I, it's about time i tipped them to be honest i think i only tipped them one other week uh this year or this season uh yeah. but it's gonna be close because i think the heat may rest some players just True. to save for finals and if so scorches may pound so yeah it says i'm tipping the heat but this is pretty line ball yeah agreed well, I'm, I'm, I'm going against you boys i'm going on the scorches uh i think just just purely because it is at uh the scorches home ground um i think yeah they just probably just got a little bit too much in in that regard uh but if anyone's going to beat the horses uh, the the horses the heat <laughs> <laughs> it would be the scorches um and what a great like uh, lineup this is for both teams. Like with the ball on a on a pacey uh, yeah. Optus Stadium deck, you got uh, Richardson, Morris, Ty, Berendorf versus uh, Bartlett, who was a leading wicket taker. Michael Nisa, uh, you've got uh, Spencer Johnson in there as well. So tall Paul, it's going to be yeah. tall Paul as well. You got some great players in there. So, but I'm leaning towards the Scorchers are going against you boys. No, I don't mind that. I, I, I do agree with uh, what Leo's saying. And I don't think the Scorchers have lost there for two and a half seasons now. So uh, if the Heat do win this, this would be a bit unprecedented. And we'll see We'll see if they can. I think whoever wins, it doesn't really affect the ladder. But I reckon they'll put out a full-strength team just to get some momentum and into the finals. All right. Uh, the big derby here in Melbourne, the Renegades versus Stars at Marvel Stadium. I'm going to go Renegades. I think uh, first time I've tipped them all season. I just think the stars are famous for crumbling uh, in Melbourne derbies. That's the only reason. I'm not going off stats. I'm not going off uh, players' lists. I'm going where's, off where's, the stars. Where's, where's, your rene- where's your renegade member scarf? Oh, nice. It's not that. even on and you're, tip- I, you're tipping them. I left it in the office, I think. It's in one of my bags over there at, in the uh, in the office. That's okay. But I'm going to tip them. I'll get my renegade scarf out on the weekend. Uh, yeah, I'm 
don't trust the stars. I just feel like they're going to crumble and I don't think they're going as well as uh, people think they are. So I'm going to go to the Renegades. Who are you going, Leo? You're wrong, stats guy. Renegades <laughs> oh. aren't winning. <laughs> Renegades will not win another game this season. Oh, they could be the Thunder actually, but they won't beat the Stars. Stars, they just have too much. Um, I know they do crumble under pressure, but they normally crumble under finals pressure. So they're not at finals yeah. yet. So I reckon they'll they'll win this one. Just here, I'm I'm, I'm going to go to the Stars here. Uh, They've got a sixteen and nine record against the Renegades, uh, mm. so so they're on they're on top in that regard. But they have they have crumbled a few times, obviously in, in previous seasons. But the Strikers have really put the pressure on them, haven't they? Um, for for that final yeah. spot, you're looking at their net run rates, one of the worst in the competition, the Melbourne Stars. So they're going to have to win both games to finish the season. I think they've got the obviously the Renegades, and then they've got the Hurricanes at home, I believe. Uh, so they're going to have to win both of those and they just have more match winners and quality all-rounders. I'm looking at obviously Stoinis, Maxwell, Dan Lawrence, Bo Webster. So yep. I think they can just, they can get the job done. No, I, no, you make, you make all your good points. So I don't know why I'm tipping the Renegades. I'm just, it's, it's in, my, in my head a bit. I got to tip it once this year. I got my <laughs> mate uh, who comments on Twitter every time I tip against the Renegades. So he'll be happy that uh, I've tipped the Renegades <laughs> this week. <laughs> he calls me out and says, you're not a real fan. I'm, I'm not a real fan of the Renegades. I, I know that. Uh, as Leo has mentioned himself, I think be yeah, a prime Renegades 2019 when they won the, won the, won the title. Uh, let's finish off with the Sunday game, Thunder versus Strikers. Uh, I think this is going to be pretty one-sided with the form that the Strikers are in. So I'm going to tip them. We've got the two top run scorers, Matt Short again. I don't think you can't get him out for less than 30-40. I don't think it's possible at the moment. He's been in unbelievable form. So just on that alone, I think he's going to, I reckon he could make a hundred in this game. There we go. I reckon he's going to make a ton and going to absolutely smash the thunder. Uh, who are you going, Leo? Yeah, strikers again. It's just, just the thunder not in great form, is it? Uh, and they've got, what, two games in three days. So yeah, I think strikers will have enough for him here. And I think solidify, solidify finals with that win. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty Ooh, much... Cool. Be cool. uh, yeah. If they win that, they're in the finals, I think. Yeah. Unless some of the stars win both their games, then they won't make finals. Yeah. Oh, no, it's top five, isn't it? No, they've changed the season. Oh, it's changed. It's changed. Oh, okay. it's changed. No, it has. Before. I knew that. I knew that. Yes, yes, yes. Because, um, yeah, there's only four finals matches instead of five uh, this five. season. So, Which is much better, I think, because if you've got a competition of eight, uh, you should not. Yeah, you shouldn't have five. I remember we discussed mm. this actually at the start of the season. Yeah. So <laughs> stars have to win those two. Yeah, you're right. Who you got, Marcus, for the this strikers uh, Thunder game? I'm going to keep it short and simple to finish off the podcast and I'm going to go to the strikers. I just believe they should get the job done and yeah, they're, they're in great form, aren't they? Yeah. No, they've been absolutely awesome. I think they've finally living up to their potential a bit with that really strong list. Definitely missing Rashid Khan, but they, yeah, they're looking all right, especially with the bat. All right. We covered a lot uh, with that show. I'm so glad we talked about the Melbourne Derby. We talked about Warney versus Marlon. I could talk about that for a whole podcast. I reckon that is hilarious. Uh, that's it for the Cricket Today show. We'll be back with this on Monday. I almost said tomorrow, but we'll be back with this on Monday after some huge big bash games so get right around the show subscribe on your podcast apps spotify apple Podcasts, etc like and review it would you chuck a follow to cricket today and cricket today are you all over the socials that's facebook instagram tiktok and x uh and then give us give a follow to football today and football today are you check out the podcast this week we talked about some transfers some epl some fa cups some efl cup so if you're a big uh soccer or football fan get around that show uh get around the socials chat to us uh, about how leo uh sorry Marcus is now a Pakistani. He, they absolutely love him over there. We might have to send him over there to do a live show because he's Barbara Azam's number one fan. So check out some of the social sets going off on TikTok, even on Instagram and things like that. Uh, and that's it, I think. Thank you, Marcus. Cheers, Tess guy. Thanks, Leo. Thanks, Tess guy. Thanks, Joe, for producing. Thanks to me. And that's another episode of Cricket Today Done. We're out.